You know, there are many people who come to faith in Jesus Christ through avenues like Catholicism or some sort of religion that's based in works. And it's pretty easy to think of the way you become justified with God through that lens that you've got to do certain things. You've got to live up to a certain standard before God will accept you. Well, the Apostle Paul is very clear, and we're going to look at it today in the book of Galatians, that that is not how we are justified with God. In fact, it's entirely different than that. Let's take a look. All right, in the book of Galatians so far, the Apostle Paul has been talking to these Galatian believers who he has met previously. In fact, he was instrumental in them coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And he is trying to persuade them that some approaches to their faith that they have begun taking are not good. And the reason they're not good is because they're steeped in Judaistic practices of law-keeping, in particular circumcision. And they're beginning to insist that, yes, 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 they want to have faith in Christ, but in addition, they need to be keeping the law in order to be justified before God. And Paul is working very hard to explain to them that such is not the case. Justification is by faith and faith alone. I think this is pertinent in our day because we often can get caught up in thinking we need to make God happy with our behavior. We need to perform in some way or else he's not going to be happy with us. We need to be crystal clear on this fact. So that's why I wanted to look into Galatians. Now here we are in Galatians chapter 2 verses 15 through 16. We come into Paul's discussion and he says, we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Now I almost hear a little bit of a facetiousness in Paul's tone here. He's speaking about himself when he says we and, and his Jewish friends who are with him. He's saying we are Jews by birth. We know the law. We understand the law. We understand uh, the, the heavy burden that it is. And he's saying we're not Gentile sinners. It's almost like that's in quotes and he's being facetious about that because that was the Jewish attitude at that time. He says, yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So also we have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. Now notice three times here, he has said justified. This is his issue. He is trying to point out to them, how are we made just? How are we made right with God? And he says, it is through faith in Jesus Christ. That is the only way. And he's pointing out here, because this is true, in fact, it is so true that we also, we Jews by birth, have also believed in Jesus Christ. Now let's stop for a moment and make sure we understand what it means to believe in Jesus Christ. And he's not talking about the kind of belief that is yes, that is like historical in nature. Like, yes, I believe Jesus existed. Yes, I believe Jesus was a man who lived back in the pre-first century, you know, that sort of thing. That's not the kind of belief he's saying. And he makes it clear where he says, we're justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. See, faith is different than belief in this sense. Faith is trusting in someone or something. It's resting in it. It's believing so much that you're taking action. You see, that is what Paul is talking about. And he's making a contrast here, and it's time that we point this out. We're justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. And he says that again up here. So, by works of the law. So, two times... He mentions works in this section. And that's actually three times. Look at it. It's down here. I missed one. So three times the Apostle Paul says works of the law in this passage. And he's saying, we've got a contrast going on here. This justification does not happen by works of the law. It happens through faith in Jesus Christ. And let's go back and highlight faith again. Okay, so here's faith once. Here's faith again. And this word belief here, 
could also be a synonym. Synonym. So let's write it over here three times. Faith is mentioned. In the Bible, repetition matters. Repetition is a big deal. So we have to pay attention to things like this. So justified three times, faith three times, and works of the law three times. Paul is really trying to drive a point home here. And moving ahead to the next two verses. Paul says, if in our endeavor, in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, see there's the word justification again, so that's a fourth time. He says, we too are found to be sinners. Is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. For if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. And this can be kind of confusing. What in the heck is he talking about? He's saying, in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, what, what does that mean? Well, he's saying, if by believing in Jesus through faith, I slip up here and there, I sin, I don't keep my life pure, what, what happens then? And he's bringing up a question that he's kind of assuming someone's going to bring up. Is Christ then a servant of sin? He's saying, does faith in Christ that does not lead to a life of absolute perfection mean that Jesus is okay with sin? Does it mean that faith in Christ really doesn't have much of an effect? And Paul's response to that is pretty strong. Certainly not. Now notice what he does here. He says, for if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. He's saying, that's not Jesus' fault when I sin. That's my fault when I sin. And his point here is that justification through Christ is really not about works at all. It's not through keeping a list of rules. It's not through keeping a list of regulations or holy commandments or anything like that. It is through faith which he made that point in the previous section of Scripture. And he says, Through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. By trying to observe the law, and in this case he has the Old Testament law in mind, he's saying we die when we try to keep the law. We can't do it. Our inner man just kind of withers up and crumbles when we try to keep a bunch of rules. And he said, I recognized at some point in my journey that that only brings death. But I gave all that up so that I might live to God. He wants to become so disenchanted with trying to keep the law, with trying to live up to some standard, either biblical or imaginary, that he gives it all up. He dies to it all so that he can rest in Jesus Christ. Notice here, Jesus is all over the passage. Now what Paul is trying to point out to us is like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw God up here with my typical flashy, glory, light shining out from him. And I'm going to put us down here, tiny little us, people, men, women, we all are seeking to be justified somehow with God. You see, that's our goal, is justification. So I'm going to write that out here. What we want is justification, which means to be made right with God. Some people have said it's just as if I'd never sinned, you see. Being made right with God is our goal. And we people, we, we humans, tend to think sometimes that we can accomplish that through observing the law. Now, I'm just going to draw a set of the Ten Commandments here like we've seen in culture all the time, you know. It's got the writing on it, all that. We seem to think we can be justified with God by keeping a list of rules. And I'll just write that out here, too. And Paul is saying in this passage... That is not the way to be justified with God. You see, in fact, 
He says, when you try that route, you wind up dying inside your soul. You cannot keep up because the law is perfect, holy, good, and you are not perfect, holy, good. So what happens instead is that God in his grace, and I'm going to write that down over here, and in his mercy, which are two different things, in his mercy and his grace, he sends Jesus. And I'll put a cross here to represent Jesus. Jesus is our intermediary between us and God. And so the way we come to be justified is through Christ because Christ lived a perfect life. And it's not only just as if he had never sinned, he really did never sin. And he gives his life to us. And we are to respond to that in faith. And that is how we are justified with God. Now, in our next scripture sketch, Paul is going to say, essentially, yeah, 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 that's great for how you initially come into right relationship with God. But what about life? Everyday living. How do we do that? How do we live that? Don't we need the rules then? Huh? Isn't, isn't that a legitimate question? And that is what Paul is going to talk about in the next section.